One day, I suddenly discovered that my husband was having an affair. I was busy taking care of my father-in-law, who suffers from dementia and raising our young daughter. I had no clue about my husband's cheating. It turned out he had already planned to marry his mistress and was thinking about divorcing me. Faced with this harsh reality, I felt overwhelmed. Despite the shock, I continued looking after my father-in-law and daughter. My husband unexpectedly told me, since I'll be getting married again, you'll need to take care of our daughter and your dad. Despite the pain, I couldn't help but regret how we ended up here. I wondered if my husband saw me only as a housekeeper. His actions made me realize he was even worse than I had imagined. My name is Melanie Stewart. I'm 35 years old, a homemaker, responsible for daily chores in my in-law's home. Our family includes my husband Greg, our four-year-old daughter Erin, and my father-in-law, making us a family of four. Earlier in our marriage, Greg and I lived in an apartment, and I worked full-time. However, after my mother-in-law passed away six months after Erin was born, Greg insisted we move in with his father because he couldn't leave him alone. It's been three years since we moved, and I've adapted to life here. Recently, my life has changed significantly. I shifted from working full-time to being a homemaker. Three months ago, while cleaning up after a meal, my father-in-law asked me what day it was. His confusion seemed like a simple mistake at the time. However, his behavior continued to worsen day by day. He would want to eat again right after finishing a meal or forget where he had put things. It was clear that this situation was not normal, and I became worried. I suggested to my father-in-law that he see a doctor, but he kindly refused, leaving me at a loss for what to do. I couldn't manage my father-in-law's care alone. His symptoms might worsen if left unchecked. So I decided to talk to my husband, Greg, about his father's condition. Since Greg left for work earlier than me and returned after my father-in-law had gone to bed, he was unaware of his father's daily struggles. Typically, I would go to bed early with our daughter, but that night I stayed awake, waiting for Greg to return home. Just after 1 o'clock a.m., I finally heard the front door open. Melanie, why are you still up? Greg looked surprised to see me as he entered the living room. Seeing him awake me up from my sleepiness, and I immediately brought up my concerns about my father-in-law. There's something I need to talk to you about, my dad. His behavior has been strange lately, I began. Greg listened, concerned. He's losing track of dates, asking about meals right after eating, and becoming very forgetful. It's not just ordinary forgetfulness, something is clearly wrong. Greg's initial reaction was dismissive. Really? Why? He's over 70. Maybe that's just how it is, he suggested. But I insisted, no, it's serious. We should take him to the hospital. Greg's expression changed, and he seemed displeased. He sighed heavily and said reluctantly, aren't you overreacting? He's just a little forgetful. Frustrated, I pressed. No, I'm telling you, it's not just forgetfulness. Greg then suggested, well then, how about you take my dad to the hospital? I'm too busy with work. Please handle it yourself. I had planned to take my father-in-law to the hospital, but he refused when I asked him. I felt I needed Greg's support, but he seemed indifferent and distracted, grabbing a beer and using his smartphone. My attempts to communicate fell on deaf ears, so I decided to give up and went to bed without a response. Despite my regular check-ins, my father-in-law stubbornly resisted going to the hospital. His dementia symptoms weren't constant. Sometimes he seemed clear-headed. I considered keeping an eye on him at home a little longer. Then one day, my father-in-law approached me seriously. Melanie, I need to talk to you, he began. He acknowledged his abnormal behavior and admitted feeling scared when alone during the day. He requested that I quit my job and stay home with him. I was speechless, shocked by his unexpected request. Confused, I asked for clarification. He explained that he felt uneasy alone and offered to cover our expenses if I stayed home. He pleaded with me to consider this, mentioning that we should go to the hospital first. 
He noticed my recent struggles at work and suggested this might be an opportunity for me to quit and find a new job. His words left me conflicted. On one hand, I was moved by his desperation. On the other, I had been contemplating quitting my job due to changes in management and a less welcoming atmosphere. Several colleagues had already left, and I felt uncertain about the future, especially with a young daughter to support. While I knew I needed to work for financial stability, finding a new job while managing my current one felt overwhelming given the circumstances. My father-in-law's proposal sounded very appealing. With his financial support, I could take the time to find a new job. Sensing my hesitation, he continued in a warm voice, reassuring me that once I secured a job, he would go to the hospital or move into a facility if needed. He expressed a desire not to cause any trouble and asked for my help until I found new employment. It was a sincere and heartfelt request. After discussing this with Greg, I made the decision to quit my current job and care for my father-in-law until I found a new one. The caregiving mainly involved assisting with daily tasks and meals, which wasn't too burdensome. He provided us with a monthly allowance for living expenses, which allowed me to spend more time with my daughter. I was grateful for his support during this period. Two months into my life as a homemaker, I had almost secured a new job after a successful final interview and receiving a job offer. Excited, I immediately went to share the news with my father-in-law. However, I found him on the phone and waited until he finished the call before approaching him. Excuse me, father, may I have a moment? I asked. He acknowledged my patience and asked if I had overheard his conversation. I assured him I hadn't listened in. I see, did you need something? He inquired. I found a new job and wanted to share the news with you, I announced. His face lit up with joy and he congratulated me warmly as if he had received good news himself. That's wonderful. Congratulations, he responded cheerfully. Now that my new job was settled, the next step was to arrange for my father-in-law to be taken to a medical facility. I planned to set this up the following day, later that night. However, my husband, who typically returned home late, came back a bit after 7 o'clock p.m. When I greeted him with surprise about his early return, he dropped his work bag without emotion and coldly said, I'm marrying her, so I want a divorce. I was too stunned to respond. Greg continued, indifferent to my shock, insisting that I sign the divorce papers he brought along. Wait a minute, what's going on? We have Aaron, and you can't decide on a divorce like this, I protested. Greg callously replied, I don't care about you and Aaron anymore. Thanks to your obliviousness, I've been able to continue my relationship with my other woman. I appreciate that. His revelation was a devastating blow. Greg then added, Since it'll cause problems for my second marriage, you take care of the kid and dad. He gave me no time to prepare emotionally for this bombshell. I wondered how we had reached this point. I had faithfully cared for his father as part of our family. Why would Greg have an affair? Did he only see me as a convenient housekeeper? The weight of it all was too much. Overwhelmed with anger and hurt, I confronted Greg. Stop being selfish. How could you think I'd accept this? I exclaimed, but Greg was adamant. Whether you accept it or not, it's already decided, he replied callously. When I mentioned Aaron, Greg insisted, you should take her along with the annoying father with dementia. His words stung. You quit your job on your own, so I owe you nothing, he added, showing no remorse. I felt my heart break. I realized I couldn't be with this man anymore. I agreed to the divorce but made it clear he was not welcome back in our lives. Greg smirked maliciously as I signed the papers and left. He left a message on my phone informing me he was moving in with his mistress until they found a new place. Alone and unsure of my next steps, my father-in-law approached me. He had overheard our conversation and prepared a room for us in advance. He pulled out photos from a detective agency, revealing Greg's affair. My father-in-law explained that he suspected Greg's infidelity months ago. He pretended to have dementia, encouraged me to improve my work situation, and secretly planned for this day.
waiting until my life was stable enough to handle the truth. My father-in-law had prepared for unforeseen circumstances by investing in a $3 million tower mansion with significant assets. He used the insurance money from my mother-in-law's death to secure our future. When I expressed my gratitude, he humbly thanked me for making his days enjoyable. He then shared his surprising plan with me to counterattack against Greg, who believed he had lost his mind. Two weeks later, after we moved into the new apartment, I contacted Greg. Immediately, he called me angrily, accusing me of destroying his family home. Confused, I revealed that it was my father-in-law's doing, not mine. Greg was furious and couldn't believe his father's betrayal. He accused his father of pretending to have dementia and orchestrating the entire scheme to protect me from Greg's infidelity. In the midst of Greg's shock and anger, my father-in-law took the phone and calmly informed Greg that he would inherit nothing. He had prepared the apartment for me and Aaron's future, as well as arranged his own care facility. We sought damages from Greg and his mistress through a lawyer. Despite their attempts to negotiate a lower amount, I stood firm. Eventually, both Greg and his mistress were transferred to separate branches with significant salary cuts. Now, my daughter and I live comfortably in the apartment my father-in-law prepared for us. It's conveniently located near a station, making my commute to my new job easy. My father-in-law moved into a facility where he's enjoying his time with new friends. We visit him regularly, grateful for his support and the new life he helped us build. My daughter and I look forward to continuing our happy lives together, cherishing the kindness and planning of my father-in-law.